after his disappearance. All this and more on KUJH. Live from the studio in Stauffer Flint at the University of Kansas, you're watching KUJH News. Good afternoon and welcome back to KUJH News. I'm Ryan Butler. And I'm Emily Johnson. A University of Kansas student has been charged with rape in connection to an incident in a dorm on KU's campus. According to the Lawrence Journal World, 19-year-old Chi Hong Kai is charged with a level one felony following his arrest on September 22nd. According to the jail booking log, Kai lived in Stouffer Apartments at the time of the assault. A spokesperson for KU confirmed a person with the same name is enrolled at the university. Kai faces a minimum of 12 years if convicted. Sexual assault has been a cause for activism on campus this year. Keegan, Keegan Hewitt joins us with more on that right now. We're actually having technical difficulties at the moment, so we will be coming back to our story shortly. Today may be the day Britney Spears finds out if she is finally free. A judge is expected to announce a ruling in the contested conservatorship that has allowed the pop star's dad to control his daughter's finances and medical needs for the last 13 years. We would like to raise awareness because this happens to people every day and if this can happen to a multi-millionaire pop icon, then this can happen to any single one of us. The hearing, set for 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time, determines if Jamie Spears will be removed as conservator. He is seeking $2 million to cover salary and legal fees, but Britney Spears' attorney has said they will not agree to a settlement. With time running out for Congress to prevent a government shutdown, Democrats are circulating a bill for short-term government funding. The fight has consumed both Republican and Democratic parties over the discussion of a looming debt limit crisis. Republicans have said they would support a bill that does not include a debt limit prohibition, with Democrats arguing the debt limit is a shared bipartisan responsibility. Time runs out on Thursday, with Senate possibly taking action today to avert a government shutdown. Gabby Petito's family is urging her fiancé, Brian Laundry to turn himself in. Laundrie's family says the last time they saw him was on September 14th. The couple was on a cross-country van trip before he returned to Florida without his fiance, who was eventually found dead in Wyoming. The Laundries did not help us find Gabby. They're sure is not gonna help us find Brian. For Brian, we're asking you to turn yourself in to the FBI or the nearest law enforcement agency. The search for laundry and testifying in the mystery deepening. A federal warrant has been issued for his arrest. As we continue to work towards having Douglas County fully vaccinated, Lawrence Memorial Hospital is working with the Lawrence Douglas County Public Health to administer COVID-19 vaccines as well as booster shots. Guided by the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, Lawrence Memorial Health is offering Johnson & Johnson as well as Pfizer vaccines at more than 25 locations across Douglas County. To find vaccines closest to you, check out www.lmh.org slash COVID-19 coronavirus resources. After the break, we'll take a look at a new barbecue restaurant in downtown Lawrence with an Olympic theme. And an inside look at the KU Sailing Club. Stay with us. Keegan Hewitt now is here with us live to talk more about the sexual assault claims that have been going around campus. Yes, Emily and Ryan, the arrest comes amid ongoing conversations on campus following recent protests outside KU's Phi Kappa Psi fraternity house over the past week. This was in response to a reported sexual assault that also happened nearly a month ago. Evidence of activism is here behind me all across the sidewalk and activists are 
trying to get survivors' message laid out, relayed out to students. They are uh, wanting to get the message heard, and the message is clear that it's time for change and it's time for justice for students. Uh, we've also reached out to Lawrence PD for more in the investigation, and they have no more details at the time. We'll make sure we get those as soon as we get them. Sanding it, this is Keegan Hewitt, the KUJH, live KU campus. Dang. And welcome back. A fun fact about me is that I actually love trying new foods and restaurants throughout Lawrence. I had the chance to try some really new and delicious barbecue this week and learn about, honestly, a new foodie paradise in Lawrence. Take a look. No surprise, gold medal barbecue is setting a gold standard in good food. From traditional favorites like brisket and pulled pork to new creations like beignets and waffles, um, it's hard seconds. not to find a winning combination sure to please any palate. Located right off of Mass Street, Gold Medal Barbecue opened its doors on August 7th after operating out of a food truck in Levensworth. The restaurant is owned by Kyle and Christina Clemens, who met prior to the 2016 Olympic Games. Kyle won a gold medal in 2016, and Christina just returned from the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. The gold medal is sitting near the front door, which tends to attract visitors. Yeah, it's it maybe kind of cheesy, but you know, but hey, uh, people want to know what the gold medal, you know, looks like, so they come in and say, "Oh, can I take a picture with it," and then all of a sudden they just get a sandwich as well. Customers are greeted by a warm and friendly environment as well as a welcoming staff. The I like the customers; they're pretty good too. Like, and then we have some regulars already that like we already know, which is good. With barbecue being a staple to the Kansas City area, Clemens hopes that gold medal barbecue can offer the same thing to Lawrence. Yeah, I may be speaking from a biased perspective, but this is the best barbecue in Lawrence. You know, like we just we put our heart, we put our souls in it. We, you know, we just really like we do it. Eating a gold medal worthy barbecue. This is Emily Johnson reporting for KUJH News. Well, personally, I had a really fun time trying a bunch of new and different spins to classic barbecue at Gold Medal. It was really fun. Definitely. I look forward to going there myself and trying it. I love a good pulled pork sandwich or slab of ribs or really anything barbecue. Yeah, you can't go wrong. From new restaurants in Lawrence to new sites, it's been mistaken for a parking garage and it's been called the eyesore of the KU campus. Now, the ugliest building on Jayhawk Boulevard has a fresh new update that makes it a landmark of Lawrence. Wesco Hall's roof repair is now finished with an added bonus up top. We added an 80 foot tall Trajan um, KU on the roof of Wesco in KU Blue. And if you go to Google Earth or you go to any of the sites where you can zoom into campus, it's going to be very um, obvious. Um, on that roof when you start zooming in. While it might be only be visible from the air, it's an important new name recognition item for the University of Kansas. The massive logo was installed by Centimark, the commercial roofing company responsible for repairing Wesco's roof. They added it at no extra cost at all to the university. A rare plant that blooms only once in 10 years drew a crowd of over a thousand to the Lawrence Greenhouse a couple of weeks ago. The Titan Arum, also known as the corpse flower, is usually only found in the wild, but the KU Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology is housing one too. We had one of our corpse flowers bloom for the first time, which is the first time that one has ever bloomed here at KU. And they're really special because they're like the largest flower in the world and also because they smell like rotten flesh, which people for some reason get very excited about. University of Kansas is one of the only places in the Midwest with this special specimen. The KU Greenhouse hopes to continue housing exotic plants in the near future. KU is known for many premier sports. However, one competitive sport many do not know about is the KU Sailing Club. Andrew Lind has more. The lot of the fun of sailboat racing is figuring out where to put your weight yeah. and when it's a tiny. Oh, beautiful. For many Kansans, sailing does not come to mind as the average weekend adventure, but for the KU Sailing Club, it is the only thing that comes to mind. As one of the captains, I am really hoping to build a strong sailing team here. 
Uh, we want to go out and compete more. We want to host more events here like the one that we're doing today. Although Captain Emma Russin looks to host and compete in more events, a lot of skill comes with that. And she says building structure is one of her main goals for this season. So we were doing a lot more structure in our practices is kind of the first thing. Why now? Because it was like the last two years I've done it. It seemed like I was coming here and not really learning anything. And like for me, part of going and doing an extra cook there is learning. Um, and sailing can be a really good life, long time, lifetime skill. And with structure comes the importance of communication because club president Sydney Van Muirhege says nothing happens without it. Communication is key when it comes to sailing because if you're not telling what you, your crewmate what you're doing, then you have no communication. Your boat is not going anywhere. And on top of that is reinforcing the idea that you have your crewmates back because you never know if something is going to go wrong and Sydney speaks to that. When you have that communication with your partner, you really, there's an understanding that like you have each other's back. And when my partner went overboard today, like I definitely had to like, go back and get him and he had to work with me in order to get back on the boat and continue racing. Reporting for KUJH News, I'm Andrew Lynn. If you are interested about the sailing team, go follow KU Sailing on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Up next, Halen Wilhite will have the forecast for the upcoming week. Stay tuned on KUJH. Welcome back and good evening everyone. We've got some weather ahead for us today. We've got showers and storms in the forecast for tonight. We've got rain starting to stay in a stick, wanting to stick around for the, much of the rest of this week and even into the weekend. And then by next week, we're hoping to see a lot more milder temperatures ahead for us as we've been currently experiencing temperatures in those lower mid to lower 90s for the past couple of days. But today we've got temperatures reaching up to a high of 84 degrees, although we are still continuing to see afternoon showers and storms stick around for the area and our precipitation chance is still at a 40 percent and we'll continue to see those rain chances stay at about 50 percent or at least we'll say pre precipitation chance jump up to about 50 percent we'll continue to see on and off rain showers for tonight and a low of 66 degrees for our for tonight and we will continue to see temperatures stay a little bit more towards the milder side we'll finally break into those upper 70s for tomorrow again continuing to see scattered showers throughout the day precipitation chance at a 80 percent so definitely want to hold on to those umbrellas for tomorrow and those raincoats as we are just going to be continuing to see lots and lots of rain in our area here's one of our future cast models kind of showing us just a little bit what we could possibly expect so we definitely see by the morning hours we'll see a few of those pop up scatter showers and then really by Wednesday night into early Thursday morning we'll see try to see this cold front start to push on through this is one of our earlier models so with each model Model, they could want to predict us pushing it closer to towards the east or off closer towards the west. But right now, currently situated towards the central part of uh, Kansas at the moment. And we'll continue to see those showers continue just again, as I mentioned before, for the next couple of days and in, well into the weekend. And here's our seven day forecast, as I mentioned before, 84 degrees. Scatter showers continue for today, and then we'll continue to see rain showers. Even Friday, 60% chance of rain showers, 70% chance of rain showers also for Saturday. And we'll see those rain showers continue to last up until Sunday, or I would say Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. And then by Monday, we'll hopefully see a little bit of a clearing. And then by Tuesday, we should see much clearer conditions and those temperatures are feeling a lot more comfortable in those lower 70s and those uh, cooler and milder temperatures for our lows as well. But that is all I have for this weather forecast. Stay tuned for more KUGH news. Welcome back. It was a busy weekend for KU sports and the NFL. Madison and Camden have more. Ryan, this is an exciting week as KU kicks off the start of Kansas men's and women's basketball this Friday with the 37th annual Late Night in the Fog. Last year, Late Night was a virtual event due to COVID, but this year, Run DMC will perform at Allen Fieldhouse on October 1st. Admission is free and open to the public. Student doors will open at 4.30 and for the general public at 5.00. Last Saturday, KU football was on the road in Durham, North Carolina to play the Duke Blue Devils. 
Ending with a final score of 52 to 33, Kansas quarterback Jason Bean ended the game with 323 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. The Jayhawk defense started lacking in the second half and allowed the Blue Devils to run away with the victory. Lawrence native Devil Neal led with 107 rushing yards and Buffalo transfer Trevor Wilson had 122 receiving yards. This was the first game since 2009 where Jayhawks had a player with 300 passing yards, 100 rushing yards, and 100 receiving yards in a single game. Sophomore running back Tory Lachlan also showed out with one rushing touchdown and one receiving touchdown. The Kansas women's volleyball team won their second night in a row, sweeping Texas Tech after five sets in LeBoc. This pushes their win streak to eight in a row, and while their hot streak continues, the Jayhawks will have yet to receive votes in the AP Coaches Top 24, 25 poll. They play at home this Friday and Saturday against Iowa State. KU Women's Soccer will host the Sunflower Showdown tomorrow at Rock Chalk Park at 7 p.m., where they will take on rival Kansas State Wildcats. KU will come into tomorrow's game with 5-6 and six and 1 and are looking to grab their first conference win after falling to number 8 TCU and Oklahoma State. And as we start to feel the temperatures drop, ski season is coming soon and the countdown for the Olympic Winter Olympic Games has begun. We are 128 days away from the Beijing 2022 Winter Olympic Games. Not that I'm counting or anything. Speaking of the games, former U.S. ski team member Cooper Cornelius is making a big change, returning to the classroom to ski for the NCAA team for the University of Denver. Check out his skills skiing at Copper Mountain in Colorado, training for the upcoming season. This week's NFL action is record-breaking. Camden Fogo has more on Week 3 action. Thanks, Madison. This weekend's NFL games were full of record breaks and comeback wins. Justin Tucker broke the record for longest field goal after kicking a 66-yard field goal that bounced off the crossbar and went in. The previous record for longest field goal was set by Matt Prater in 2013. The kick sealed a comeback victory for the Ravens over the Lions. Jaguars' Jamal Agnew tied the record for longest kick return when he made a 109-yard touchdown after Arizona's Matt Prater missed an attempted 68-yard field goal to beat his own record. Antonio Cromartie set the kick return record in 2007 after missed field goal, and Cordero Patterson tied the record in 2007 when he had a 109-yard kickoff return touchdown. Patrick Mahomes became the fastest player to ever hit 15,000 passing yards during the Chiefs' Sunday afternoon loss to the Chargers. This loss puts them in last place in the AFC West and marks the first time the Chiefs have ever had a losing record under Mahomes. Mahomes spoke after the game about the loss. Um, we, just we just didn't execute whenever it came down to it. And uh, in this league, when you're playing teams like them, like the Chargers, they're a good football team. If you don't execute, uh, you don't win football games. The Broncos and Raiders currently lead the AFC West with both teams undefeated. Only five teams remain undefeated heading into Week 4. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers sealed a comeback win Sunday night after Rodgers got the ball in field goal position with 37 seconds and no timeouts. Mason Crosby made the 51-yard field goal to beat the 49ers 30-28. Week 4 will kick off Thursday night when the Jaguars take on the Bengals at 7.20 p.m. The Chiefs will play the Eagles Sunday at noon, and Tom Brady will take on his former team, the Patriots, Sunday at 7.20 p.m. Back to you, Emily and Ryan. I was a little surprised about the Chiefs' loss this past weekend. One, one area where they're always really good is the turnovers, uh, and they unfortunately had a three in the first half and they just found themselves in too big of a hole. No, it was really hard to watch, honestly, but it ended up still being a pretty close game in the end. Definitely a disappointing loss for the Chiefs, but hopefully we will be coming back next week even better. Yes, stay tuned with us after the break. From adversity, we rose. We made history and became pioneers, voyagers, champions, Jayhawks. And when our chant rises, Jayhawks. haunting and hallowed, Jayhawks are telling the world what's near. Victory. Walking down Jayhawk Boulevard, you can hear music from the Campanile, but inside the instruments may not exactly be what you think. 
KUJH reporter Dre Bradley takes a look. The Campanile is one of KU's most historic landmarks, with the names of fallen World War II soldiers forever etched in stone. But above, an instrument called the Carillon makes this building even more special. This unique looking instrument that Associate Professor of Music Dr. Elizabeth Burke out is playing is called the Carillon. These keys are connected to xylophone bars. So. It's an instrument that takes your whole body to play. And we can play the lower half of the bells with our feet. Dr. Bergal was previously in the practice room playing on xylophone keys. In the main room, you get to hear the carillon in action. Graduate student Alyssa Dye is not a music major, but she still finds a connection between the carillon and counseling psychology. I initially started Carillon thinking this had nothing to do with counseling psychology and then realizing that so much of what I was learning here I was actually applying in counseling psychology. So I was using metaphors about the Carillon with my clients. For Alyssa, playing the Carillon is a form of self-care. It feels like you're leaving your, your worries down below and you go up there and open the windows and you can hear the birds or the cicadas. Um, and then it's just you and the bells, and the sound of the bells just envelops you when you're up there. It's really exhilarating for me. Concerts are held at the Campanile, but despite sparse crowds, Dr. Bergout still enjoys performing. Sometimes I forget that there's an audience because I'm up in the tower and I don't see who's out on the ground who might be listening. Uh, so sometimes it's I feel like it's a private concert for myself. For KUJH, I'm Drew Bradley. Concerts at the Campanile are held every Sunday at 5 p.m. And that's all for KUJH. Be sure to tune in every Wednesday at 4 o'clock p.m. for KUJH News. Follow our socials on Twitter at KUJH underscore KU and our Instagram at KUJH News. I'm Emily Johnson. And I'm Ryan Butler. Have a great evening.